Thank you very much. What I'm going to speak today about is backup and restore of infrared remote controls. It's AV related, so I thought it actually might make use because the idea for this came when working in the MediaTek and we got replayers from one manufacturer and we had several decks to transfer our VHS tapes and you did not have a rewind button on the deck anymore. And I was like, <laughs> when, when Marion had to transfer tapes and it was like, you go like, oh no, just please just, just rewind that one, not the other ones. And you know, it was like, I, I couldn't watch this and I was like, hey, cool, uh, let's pick apart the remote control and, and put on a cable and just prolong the thing, put the IR diode on it and wrap it in a plastic thing so you can hold it on the device. So we did that. But then I was like, okay, another day, Marianne found the replayer on the internet and it came without remote controls. Happens, so you get a deck and you, the remote control is lost. Now imagine you have a deck that has no rewind button, you don't have a remote control. And I was like, hang on a second. Um, like uh, 10 years ago, I did this at home on Linux. I could actually build a receiver and, and actually record remote controls and there were text files. What about this? Let's, let's take a look. So my requirements for storing remote controls and actually dealing with remote controls was like, um, there's stuff that like, you can buy it and there's a remote control that works with this receiver and only this receiver and only this remote control and only on a PC and only on this operating system and so on and so forth. And it was quite frustrating because you could only use it in one way. You couldn't really use it for backing up or exchanging or even do anything else than control that piece of software. So it was like, no proprietary hardware and software. It's me, it's not surprising. Um, I want to work, have to work it independently. If I have a receiver, I want to be able to use it with all kinds of remote controls, not just the one from that vendor. And I want to have it to work beyond end of life because we always use the stuff beyond what it was thought and intended for. I want to have it with any IRR remote. And in my case, if I can map it to shell applications, I can basically control the world by remote control buttons. So let's go for this. Um, I said I did it over 10 years ago because um, Bluetooth was too expensive, but it was kind of new, and I was like, how cool is that? You can remote control a computer over the ear. And there was no wireless or, like, I'm like, what about if you could roast infrared remote controls? I don't know, it was like in, in 2000 something. So I went online, and then I found the Linux infrared control, Lyrts project, still alive and kicking. Um, I thought it was dead in between with, with um, people having their home cinema, Kodi, Raspberry Pi setups. They were more like, I want to have a remote control again. So this project became more interesting again. What you see up there is an old school text-based um, circuitry of an infrared receiver that you can actually hook up on your serial port. It has three pins, oh, drawing here. Um, Got three pins here, that's all you need. And the material costs are like three euros. It was easy to build. So I built one back then and I still had it. But there's no more serial port. So I was like, I already had this up and running, I have it. And like, well, but there's USB to serial converters. And I was like, no, what about USB? So I was like, oh. There's a Flirts project, it looks sexy, it looks nice, it's there, you just plug and play and everything, I'm like, don't. I was really misguided, I felt kind of abused and led down a dark alley and it was not okay. It was just not okay, Flirts developers, because they took the idea of Flirts, added an F, what you usually add for free, as in FLAC or FOSS, it's not Flirts. It's some proprietary stuff that is basically embedded into free and open source systems, but it's basically a proprietary bubble and the hardware, there's no schematics and no documentation. And I was like, no. And they even patented it in September 26, and it's not the right attitude. I mean, it's probably a good thing, but it only works for controlling your TV sets. I was like, no. What about USB to serial? Stuff looks like this. There's USB on one end, and serial pins on the other. So that basically emulates a serial port over USB. But didn't work. 
Why it didn't work? As far as I could figure out, the timing. The timing of the infrared pulses, it's an issue. And the serial interface is usually the RS-232 is really, really good with timing because it's like low-level hardware. But if you have the USB abstraction layer, it can't really guarantee the timing. And it's not built for this. It's for data transmission, not real-time transmission. And the original Lyrts receiver, it was a hack of the serial interface. Didn't even come. No. But there's another USB to serial chip. So these are different chipsets. And I'm like, chipsets do different things. Let's try the other one. Kind of worked, should have worked. Some people have used this chipset successfully. I haven't. After kind of like two days of like not really finding useful information, because like, anyway, didn't work reliably enough. So I kind of was like, nah, there has to be something else. Ta da! Um, in case people of you do not know a Raspberry Pi, it's like a Raspberry Pi. It's one of the most amazing things that just made my life, like, make me happy. You know, like Raspberry Pi makes you happy, a Raspberry Pi makes you happy. So that's the first prototype. Um, the white thing in there, like if you make, open it up, that's a Raspberry Pi. It's a small computer. That's version one because I have several ones of them at home because I use them for all kinds of stuff, like all the time. This is like a, you have one at home just because you can do anything with it, whatever. So that's the version one. And you see these pins up there. I just had to hook up three cables, go to a nice website that goes like, OK, the three pin receiver stuff that you saw in the first image, you just hook it up to the GPIO pins. I'm not, I like, there's stuff on the internet where you look up how to do this. I'm just saying like, that it exists and that you can basically do it. So. That's the infrared receiver. It costs like one euro something, or maybe a few cents, depending on how many you buy. And you hook it up on these three pins. That's a SD card with the operating system. Version one of the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a wireless interface, so that's a wireless interface. If you have a new Raspberry Pi, all you need is the SD card and the receiver. You hook it up. You put on Lyrts. Basically, um, all now you need to do is teach it the remote, but we'll get to this. And the cool thing is, that's the hardware now that you can use to record a remote control. Any remote control that runs on the frequency that this receiver is built for. But in my old setup, I also built a sender. Why would I want to build a remote control sender if I have the remote control? What, what, what am I trying to do? You have a remote control, you read it in, you have it as a text file. A remote control can be stored as a plain text file. That's really cool. And if you have this text file and you don't have the remote control anymore, you can use this circuitry, which is also a few cents, to basically emulate any button of any remote control that you get as a text file. Yes, it's a prototype. But that only works on Raspberry Pi because you have the general purpose input-output, the GPIO pins that um, have sufficient timing and the driver is especially written for Raspberry Pi, but I'm like, what if you want to do this on a non-Pi hardware? And then a friend of mine suggested IR Toy. It's from Serious Prototypes. And it's still available. It's kind of not a new project, but it's really, really well documented. It's from Dangerous Prototypes. You get it ready to build, or you could build your own if you want to for about 10 bucks. The timing stuff is handled on board. You get schematics. You get the code. You get anything. It's really an infrared toy if you want to do infrared stuff. As you can see here, it has one big LED that's for sending. The next one is receiving, and the other one's raw receiving. Mm. Usually, infrared signals are already coded, and the middle receiver just automatically decodes it. And the last one does not decode it, so it gives you the raw infrared signals, and you can kind of like do low-level decoding manually. So if you have anything to do with infrared remote controls, this is a nice thing to get. Now, it nicely works, getting back to Lyrds, it nicely works with Lyrds. And how do you configure? Like, now you have the hardware. As I said, an infrared remote control from the point of view of Lyrds is just a text file. That's an example of what it looks like. So you have a comment like this was auto generated. What you do is you start a Lyrds program and say, hey, that's the hardware that is used to read the remote control. And then you just go like, OK, this button is called 
key play, and then you press that button. That button's called key stop. You press that button, and then you get these hex numbers, and those are the codes for each button. That's it. These text files have been, since this project is like really old, which is good, a massive amount of infrared remote controls in text files have been collected on the Lyrics website. So if you're looking for a remote control for a model that you didn't, you lose your loss that you want to have, check out if it's there, it might be. If it's not and you have the remote control and you happen to make such a setup, uh, I can build one for you. Uh, you can, as an archiving community, we can now share and exchange remote controls. We can actually archive them as text files. Now, what to do with this? I said, I don't just want to back up and restore and exchange them. I want to do stuff with it, like run a shell command. Well, there is infrared exec from Lyrts, and you have this blue block that just says, well, if uh, you run the program irexec and somebody presses the key red, just right on the command line, you press the key red. The thing with config, you can put any command line thing in here. You can just randomly go crazy and mix. You can even mix remote controls in one file. You can really do anything. I did it, and it works, and it's great fun. But it gets even better. Because there was Dr. Ben Martinson. I, I, I don't know what to say. He has, if you go to the Hark Toolbox site, this is like this person has spent so much time in documenting the field of remote controls. Starting with infrared remote controls, going to raw infrared remote controls, going to, that's not infrared, that's actually wireless, but old school remote controls. He documented it so well, he wrote uh, lots of tools, he even proposed a better protocol than the Lyrts text files because it said, well, but there are some cases that you can actually not do as well or document as exactly with the simple Lyrics text file. So he proposed GIRR, a universal format for IR commands and remotes for exchanging these informations. And he wrote the tool IR Scrutinizer, uh, which looks like this. So like, ah, oh, finally a graphical user interface. <laughs> Even if it's Peter. Uh, that, so I took the infrared toy, hook it up on USB, and then it goes like, doop, device TTY, ACM0, open, doop. It says firmware version 222, and that was it. Now I have my infrared sending and receival set up on any computer up and running. That's a stand, like an, an app image, but it's kind of like, I think it's in Java or something. It's cross-platform, that's, that's now run on Linux. What was in there is, Hey, by the way, you don't have to remote. I was like old school from like going to the Lyrics website, downloading the text file, loading the text file, like, no, there's infrared database. .tk. There seriously is a collection of every single remote button individually. Like I like text file per remote, but with IRDB, you can do this. You just drop down a manufacturer list. It goes to IRDB, which has an API, loads a list of all manufacturers that it knows the models from, and then you can choose which device type from that vendor you want to have, and then you just open this, you get a list of the buttons off this remote, and you can basically just double click on that, and then the IR tour goes blink, and sends this key in that language of that remote. I was like this, I think I should share this. That's why I handed in this small little talk. Now that you know that this is possible, what can be done with this? Well, the thing is, you buy gear, there's no remote, you go like, <laughs> but is it on IRDB or on Lyrts? Or does any other archive have it? Then maybe they can make a backup, put it online, we all have the remote, problem solved. Some functions require the remote. Well, no more fear of rewinding that one VCR because you just take a 35 cent IR diode, tape it over the IR receiver, put it on a Raspberry Pi, and just have a web interface on your, I mean, it's like, it should be like one day, including coding. Uh, 
backup and exchange of IR remote controls. I find this really helpful for archiving and preservation of whatever uh, AV stuff and gear. Oh yeah, by the way, you can actually remote control stuff. Like, why is he telling this? Like, we got it. No, uh, you could even make, take another remote control that controls nothing in your room and just um, have a Raspberry Pi translate from one remote control signal to arbitrary other ones. So I could have like the keys one, two, three, control, rewind, stop, and fast forward on the first player, four, five, six, do something else on another player. You get the idea. So I could just do stuff. And then you could, since it's on a computer, you could basically map this to another computer, a web interface, another application, or your smartphone, or whatever. So the opportunities are endless, but now I don't have to be afraid of losing a remote control anymore. I've backed up all my remote controls that were still functional and uploaded the files. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Thank you, Peter B. Uh, such, such cool work. Oh, hi, this is Ben from uh, NYPL. Um, have you experimented with using this technique to deal with issues related to needing a remote control to turn off on-screen warnings? So sometimes you can only use a remote control mm -hmm. to turn off something that would be like a tracking issue. Ooh. So if your tape has a tracking issue, sometimes it pops up on screen and you yeah. can only turn it off with a remote control and you have to go into the menu to do, yes. to turn off that feature. You can write a macro to, if you're like, uh, are you getting it like, you need to do several actions on a remote control yeah, with human exactly. interaction, you'd be yeah. like too fast, you got the on-screen display, like, ah! Yeah. You could speed this up, you could just map a button on your computer with the recording application to go like, if this happens, you press this button and then it runs a script that sends the right infrared remote control sequence. Okay. Something like that. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, I'm Marion from the Mediathek. And I just wanted to add a little bit. Um, Ben already said it. I think the question may be for some in the room, why do you need remote control? So just work with a professional tech, you don't have the problem. Um, the thing is in the Austrian Mediathek we have, uh, our main collection is consumer formats and uh, videotapes that were made by non-video professionals. And the thing is uh, you have a lot of long play material that you can't use, um, you, you can't use really professional recorders to replay long play. So therefore you need your com consumer take, uh, te uh, decks. Um, and the other thing is uh, for hi uh, high aid or video aid, you always have the on-screen display problem that Ben mentioned earlier. So yeah, that was... Um, a little bit back from oh, Thank you, I was afraid you were like, Peter's tape. lying, that never happened. <laughs> Anything else? Well then, we catch up on some of the time. Thank you and enjoy the show.